up guys hope you're doing okay texas platinum is back again the three of us are here and it's uh it's been a bit of a up and down week as i'm sure a lot of us uh have been feeling uh getting the news at the beginning of the week that uh apparently the big man urban is not interested in coaching at texas so we're going to discuss this as well as recap the kansas state game before, before we get into that, first off, please subscribe if you haven't already. We've gotten a lot of subscribers from that previous uh, video from last week, which was awesome. Um, so for the, those of y'all that are new here, that this is the only your second video of us, welcome back. Happy to have you. And then, of course, please drop a like, comment, all that good stuff. And uh, let's get into it. Myers, uh, we didn't get your, your guy, Urban Meyer. Um, Thoughts about this? Uh, thoughts from everyone. Um, how are we feeling, guys? I'm feeling I'm feeling sad, but at the same time, we kind of knew to be very cautious with the uh, optimism because it it always seemed like a pipe dream to begin with, and then it got real for like a short while, and then it slowly just started to fade back away. So I'm I'm sad. I'm more sad that it looks like Herman's probably going to end up staying. All of a sudden, we just decided he's going to stay now. So. <laughs> Um, that's what I'm more sad about than missing Urban, because I still think there's some good op, uh, candidates on the table that I'll, I'll elaborate on in a minute. What about you, Madrid? Yeah, um, I was always at the school of thought that, like, Urban was the only option. Um, I tweeted out, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, when the news broke, that, uh, you know, you can't make – you can't make Urban Meyer say yes. I mean, you can offer as much money as you want, but if he doesn't want the job, he doesn't want the job. Um, but with that being said, um, I'm proud of this administration, and I'm proud of um, CDC uh, for trying to go get one, like to try to go get a big uh, a big name. Um, I, I like the effort. Um, better than Patterson already by a mile. Uh, CDC's my guy. Uh I, I trust whatever he does with the program going forward next, whether that is with Herman. Personally, I don't want it to be Herman, but if that's what he thinks is better for us, then uh, I'll live with it. Uh, so, yeah, I just trust CDC, anything he's doing. And uh, But, uh, yeah, disappointing, but um, I, don't, I don't know if the odds were really in our favor in the, in, the, in the beginning. So, but, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. I mean, in order to get Urban – it, a lot of factors would have had to line up. I mean, the money was obviously there with us with the type of deal that we were offering him, but it's really so much more than just that. Um, he had to a want to get back into coaching, which it, it kind of sounded like he did want that, but the factors um, with his health, I think were a big thing um, with his uh, family life seemed to be a really big thing. Uh, it sounds like where he is now in the Midwest, I'm not sure if it's in Ohio, I think it is. Um, that seems to be a, a pivotal part of his life, which, you know what, good for him. You're retired. Uh, family should be that big thing. Um, that on top of, um, I mean, again, going back to the health, I think the health is probably the biggest factor. I heard reports that uh, when his wife was speaking on it, that um, apparently he hasn't had any like big migraines or headaches at all ever since uh, the Rose Bowl game, his last game of his career, like literally not coaching was the answer <laughs> for his health to get significantly better. And you know what? Uh, ultimately, your health comes first, your family comes first. Um, he's really good at his Fox job. He's fantastic, actually. Oh, he's, he's great to watch. So, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, um, obviously we're all pretty upset that uh, he didn't accept this job. And uh, yeah, we will always probably go back and think of the what if. Um, but, I mean, just like Madrid just said, you, you can't make a guy accept the job. And he, for all those that are – because there's a lot of haters out there right now that are, that are laughing at the Texas fan base, and, and rightfully so. Like, I get that. But at the same time, you wouldn't have like, the same if Urban was looking at your program. You know what I mean? Like, if right. there was a rumor about Urban Meyer coming to your program, you wouldn't get all giddy either. Like, come on. Exactly, exactly. And, and like, you can't, you can't fault UT for trying, first off. Yeah. And second off, um, 
it's not like he just said no outright. Like this had gone on for, even though like the big, like the big news media didn't start covering this until like a week ago when, when things really kind of started happening. Um, this had been going on for a while and he didn't immediately come out and say, nah, like he, I mean, th- the stuff that we reported in the last video, that wasn't all just made up, you know, fairy tales and stuff like those things actually happened. We wouldn't have, we went to mentioned it. Well, we weren't just talking about rumors, you know, yeah. last show we were talking about things that actually had been reported and stuff. So um, it's not like he wasn't interested in the UT job. I mean, ultimately, we'll never quite know why he said no unless he comes out with it himself. But, um, yeah, for for those that are hating out there, like, okay, I get it. Like, have your fun with it. But at the same time, like, don't fault us for trying. And um, at the same time, uh, yeah, (laughs) you know. But I'm not I'm not going to go any more into defending, you know, defending us or defending our fan base any more than that, like, it is it is funny at the end of the day but it certainly sucks on our end and <laughs> yeah so myers any any more additional thoughts on the topic of urban before we hop into what now yeah it's it's just disappointing like we've been saying but another factor for the reason that it seemed like he didn't take the job was that was also reported is he had trouble seemingly you know, gathering his his old crew of coordinators and I forgot to coordinators, that. like support staff. Yeah, that's kind of um, that's kind of what I think may have been one of the bigger issues. And they just use health as like a blanket to just cover everything. Because hmm. I read from like multiple outlets that his health is not going to stop him. It's going to come down to if he wants to, if he can get the staff he wants. So yeah, that may have also played a role. But yeah, it's just it. it really doesn't matter at this point he's he's probably not coming now so yeah the, the question is where do we go now and uh, you know it, it's strange because before the uh, Kansas State game it was just like Tom Herman is completely done like there's no way yeah he's like recruiting's dead nobody in the fan base supports him none of the none of the admin supports him he's just an unlikable guy and then we blow out a uh, really bad Kansas State team coming yeah, off that's... a 45-point loss to Iowa State and a loss to Baylor. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we're all talking next year, again, for the next 12 years. Like, the last 12 years, we've been saying that after these late-season meaningless wins. So I don't want to be caught in that trap again. Herman's, Herman wins these games that, like, right, right outside of contention. They'll get us close, but not over the hump. So, I mean, if he does come back next year, maybe he can improve, but I'm not – expecting anything i'll be like i'll be i'll be expecting like an eight and four seven and five season next year as well easily Um, so yeah i mean herman coming back may be the best option but there's some guys that i'll list off that i I would prefer to go after you know with the admin and cdc and try to get one of these guys in here because it's just the optics the uh the negative press surrounding texas and herman because i mean cdc and the admin went behind his back and started courting like replacements and that's going to, that's going to hurt just the trust between the uh, admin and the coach, but also just the recruiting like A&M and Oklahoma, they're going to milk that. Like Tom Herman's one loss away from being fired. Come play here. You know, we're better than them anyways in the field right now. Plus we have stability here. So it's just going to be a nightmare of uh, on the recruiting end. Um, but there are some things that if we do keep Herman that I think we can do to help, you know, patch things up in the short term but yeah I just preferably for the long term I'd rather move on from Herman now than then you know just patch it up I'd rather just you know cut the snake's head off and just restart Same. yeah uh before you get on to the uh to the other candidates bro like I, you, it's probably a smart idea to put some money on uh Texas winning the bowl game this year bro it's gonna be it's gonna be great a lot of momentum gonna go into next year after winning uh what other whatever lousy bowl we're in? The so, Outback Bowl. Yeah, we're due. We're, we're due be, for that boomerang trophy. We'll we'll beat we'll we'll beat some random team. Nah, that's some random team. It's a Power Five team. Um, and some random bowl. I mean, and uh, by like Penn two State. Push, there they go. Yeah, we'll beat Penn State this year. Michigan. Like, ah, next year. So a lot of the Longhorns are saying, "Well, we struck out on Urban. There's not a clear upgrade." 
So let's just ride the ship out with Herman another year, even though recruiting's in a dump and um, like Oklahoma and a are surging. And I think there are upgrades. There's actually three of them that I really like. Uh, and not even like Matt Campbell, Cristobal, even James Franklin, I think would be an upgrade, but not even him because he just, he's like, it, we're not going to hire a coach that's two and five this year. I don't yeah. think, even though he does have a good relationship with Crystal Conte, then we could pull We could definitely pull that higher if we wanted to, but just, it would just be bad, you know, hiring a two and five head coach to replace a, a six and three head coach. Um, but there are three guys, Dan Mullen, which I don't think that one's is realistic, but, Dan Mullen, Brian Kelly, and Chris Peterson. These are three guys that all have skins on the wall. Uh, I mean, just look at – let's start off with Brian Kelly, for example. He's – uh the last four seasons, they've had over 10 wins at a Blue Blood University. He gets paid $1.6 a year, which is um, – I mean, it's a private school. I'm, I'm sure they could, you know, bump him up to like five or six. But, I mean, I don't think Texas would lose him over money. And just, just, um, uh, Brian Kelly, the thing about him is recruiting. He's complained about Notre Dame's ability to recruit the, uh, the, like the Southern talents. It's, it's just hard to get players out there with their academic requirements and just being in the Midwest. So, um, I think if they went to the playoff, like we're, like we're expecting and say they get destroyed by Alabama and then he's just kind of like solidified again, like I can't beat these Southern teams, these Southern powerhouses. I think there may be like a window of opportunity right there to, you know, try to swoop in and, and grab him. Maybe he wants to win a natty and he knows that it's going to be really hard at Notre Dame at Texas with Texas talent. He could do that. So I think that could be an opportunity there to grab a Brian Kelly, which would be an upgrade in my opinion. And then uh, Dan Mullen, he's uh, it's three years at Florida. They've all won 10 wins pretty much. I mean, if you count this year, they might end up with nine wins based on uh, just the shorter season, but it would be 10 wins. They've been, They've been in New Year's Six Bowls every single year. I think he's been there. Uh, he won at Hale State, or he definitely raised the the, uh, the ceiling at Hale State, raised the floor as well with Dak Prescott, which is so hard to do in the SEC West. So he's won everywhere he's been. But, um, I mean, Florida's going to pay whatever we pay. They, they finally found a great coach, and it's going to be hard to pull him. But, I mean, maybe it's a situation, too, where they get destroyed by Bama and then in and, and the SEC Championship, and then Kyle Pitts, Kyle Trask, all their stars declare – and he knows that they're going to be really bad next year. And he's like, huh, maybe I can restart right now and just go build a, a mini dynasty in, in the Big 12 because the SEC is obviously way more difficult to you know, win regular, regularly there. So I think that could be an intriguing option, but less likely. And then Chris Peterson, he's just a winner. Um, 147 and 38 as a head coach. Uh, he's got the CEO vibe. He seems very, uh, he seems very like iconic. And uh, I think he would do well with the Texas media. Um, I mean, he's been to the playoff at Washington. He's won a Power Five conference championship in the Pac-12. So I think Chris Peterson, if he did want to come back to coaching right now, because he is 56, but he kind of pulled the urban saying, I need to step away. It's just, it's, just, it's been a lot. I need to recharge my batteries. So, I mean, if, if we did try to pursue Chris Peterson, it would come down to uh, him if he wanted to coach again and uh, at a school like Texas. But, um, I mean, there's no buyout for him, so it would definitely be affordable. But – those are just three guys off the top of my head that are, that are um, clear upgrades from Tom Herman. And uh, I just think it would be beneficial just because of the recruiting mainly that I, I don't want to, you know, just kill another class 2022 with having Tom Herman halfway out the door the entire season. And then we lose to OU again and we fire a mid season. And then we have Chris Ash recruiting like Quinn Ewers' class. And then 2023 starts getting messed up too. Yeah. And it's just like a, a boom. We're, we're not competing for a title until it's 2024 because we have like um, – we have a gap in talent these two, three years. So I don't want to like kick this down further into the decade if we can get an upgrade now, which I think we can. One of those three coaches, I think there's an opportunity to get one of them. So, yeah, that was kind of my – me spitballing um, what I would like to do. But – I don't, I don't know if we will. Uh, I'm happy with any three of those. Those would be amazing. Just because, like, I was uh, every time you were, like, list, listing off, like, accolades or, like, uh, attributes of each coach, I was like, man, each one of those is just better than Herman. Like, <laughs> it's just – at least with those guys that you've seen it. You've seen it. You know what I mean? 
I'm tired of waiting to see it or like t- Herman proving it at Texas. Like at least I know what I'm getting with all three of those guys. Preferably, I think Brian Kelly would be great down here just because if he can do that at Notre Dame, who says he can't do it even better at Texas. Um, but yeah, all those guys definitely on my wish list too. I hope we pursue at least one of them. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if Mullen's gonna leave Florida. Yeah, that's the ones I'm the most shaky about. And also, sure. I really like Dan Mullen a lot. Um, is he an obvious? I mean, I would say that he's an upgrade from Tom Herman, but is he like a big enough upgrade to spend that kind of money on? Same with Peterson. Like Kelly, I get at this point. Like I, I feel like he's he'd probably be our number one option granted it's going to be the hardest to get him because he's on a really good Notre Notre Dame team right now and I know I don't know if he'd want to leave there um but yeah would y'all say that both I mean yes they're upgrades like no but is it worth the money well is Dan Mullen would he cost as much as Irvin I don't is no no right but but you'd have to I don't know how his contract is structured. I'd, I'd yeah, have to look either. that up. But my assumption is that he probably won't cost quite as much as Mullen, but you would have to pay for his buyout probably as well as Herman's buyout and then a, a contract on top of that. That's what you're saying. Though. Yeah. Yeah. His buyout's two mil, I believe. That's what oh. I read. And But then we would have to pay him probably around like nine, $9 million, $8 million to pull him from Florida. And I'm sure Florida may even come close to matching that or match that. And then at that point, it's just like, yeah. Oh, if, if if you're playing, if you're paying over nine million for Dan Mullen, that's yeah. what, it needs to be like mutual where he wants to have his own show in the Big Twelve where he doesn't have to compete with Georgia and Bama every year. It would have to be a situation like that. And that's why I think the SEC championship could be an important moment. If they go and get destroyed by Alabama, he might just say, um, "This is a little too challenging for me. I can go to." Texas and walk my way into the playoff every year and, you know, win there. So um, maybe that's a scenario, but I, I doubt it. I still think Dan Mullen of these three is the least likely. Yeah. Agreed. And I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm also just not sure about Peterson either. I like, would he even work at Texas? I mean, I know that he's a good coach. I just, I don't know if he would be able to, recruit to, I, I, I could be just talking out of my ass but <laughs> I don't know I don't know I, if I could see him really recruiting you got playoff appearance well. on your resume you're you're good in my book yeah yeah but I, I'm talking about recruiting and those relationships specifically because he's yeah. such a Definitely. west coast guy I, yeah, that's what you're saying. I don't know just my thoughts what do you think Myers yeah he recruited well at Washington he's had them in qual- quality classes top top 15, top 20 classes by Washington standards. That's really good. Um, and he does have like that California pipeline and all that. He's definitely a West coast guy. So yeah, if we did hire him recruiting in Texas would be a little bit of a challenge at, at first, but I think that we'd prioritize, he'd prioritize getting some Texas guys on the staff and I think okay. he'd be able to pull in top 10 classes. I mean, Charlie did Tom Herman did. So, uh, I mean, Charlie was a Florida guy and he did it. So mm-hmm. that's true. I think it's definitely possible, but yeah, he wouldn't be like the Saban type classes where they're just top four every year, the urban type classes, but he would be able to pull in equal to Herman classes. I would, I would definitely imagine. Yeah. Let's also talk NFL coaches briefly. Um, I know that last week Myers, you said that from your sources, they were hinting that apparently as a, plan B or C or some type of option that we were eyeing an NFL coach that apparently would get the fans excited. Have you, have you heard anything new about that or no? Or yeah. Is that all just rumors? <laughs> no, they leaked it. I think Oh, they it, did. It's Gary Kubiak, which is just, oh, I'm good. I'm good off that. I'm good. Off he that. wouldn't get anybody excited. What? Yeah. I don't Nobody wants that. He passed on Vince Young. At, he, for the yeah. Like, mm-hmm. No. He hasn't coached college in 30 years. <laughs> <That'd be cool. laughs> He's Aggie. He went to A&M. No, I'm oh, my good, God. Bro. It's a Manchurian candidate. He's going to come in and, and wreck us, bro. Yeah, I'd rather keep okay. her and hire him for sure. Yeah. 
Definitely. Wow, what a disappointment. I was excited. I was like, who could it be? <laughs> I'm really good off any NFL coach in this in this slew of uh of uh, or the, in this this pool of candidates for the NFL. Like they're all just kind of like all right. You know what I mean? Like there's no one yeah, no. I'd rather stick with someone that's in the in the college realm. I'd I'd still try going after Shanahan because I, I I talk about him, I think, every show, but oh, I really amazing. do think he's a, yeah. he's a home run slam dunk. He's, it's easy. A, yeah. he's equivalent to a, a Jim Harbaugh higher at Michigan. I mean, obviously, that's not working out, so hopefully it would work out. On the hype end, would be there. But yeah, the hype would be there, and um, genius offensive mind NFL coach coming into Texas, and uh, much like how um, – why am I blanking on his name? The coach at Arizona State. Herm Edwards, much how their recruiting selling point this past these past couple of seasons has been like, come to Arizona, we got all NFL coaches, we're going to turn you into an NFL player. Um, I, I I think that similar strategy could work and yeah. uh, get Texas back into the NFL draft um, elite status, uh, much different than it is right now. On top of everything else, I I. I I, do I think he's going to accept the job? No, not at all. I, I don't see him leaving the NFL, but at least, at least try with him. And, I, and I'm sure people are talking to him and maybe he's already rejected it without even needing an offer to come across and just like, no, I, I'm not doing college, um, which I get, but I don't know. I, I think that's so much of a, not quite as bit of a slam dunk as the Urban Meyer would have been, but it, not too far off in my mind, at least. Okay. So, yeah, I don't um, know if they're going to do that though. <laughs> yeah, it's been. I think they have like reached out, and he's. It's been a hard no. Like, no, I'm not interested at all. Okay, he's got a great thing going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so if we aren't getting another coach and we ride with Herman, let's talk about that. Um, first off. If we do ride with Herman, um, it's going to be a bit of a weird meeting between Del Conte and Herman and be like, hey, I, I know for the past season I've done nothing to support you, talk badly about you behind your back, put the whole blame of the eyes of Texas on top of you, uh, courted your former coach, Urban Meyer to be our head coach. We're cool, right? Um, but we're we're, bu- we're buds, right? <laughs> you want you want an extension? You want to hang around? Yeah, like uh, that's gonna be. Oh lord! Look, um, it's the best for the short term, maybe. But the faster we make get a new coach, the better we'll be. Myers, what do you think? Uh, how do how does Del Conte even go about this? If we do keep Herman around i think i think del conte if we do keep herman around i think the way to go about it is just continue being really hard on herman just saying well if we're going to keep you we're going to support you for now but when or bring me someone or we'll get someone who can that's kind of that's kind of been the message that i've been hearing from del conte over the last over the season so what what he would just I don't think he should try to extend him or make up or anything like that. I think he continue to put the pressure on Herman uh, just behind the scenes, obviously not vocally, you know, support him vocally uh, just so the optics check out, but uh, to continue to demand a lot out of Herman, because um, I feel like Herman's good with pressure. So if her, if Del Conte is just on, on his butt the entire time, I think that may be beneficial, may pull the best out of Herman underdog mentality. Um, but if we do keep Herman, uh, I kind of had like a wish list of things we need to do. Um, first of all, Del Conte needs to speak to Herman about his press conferences and just the way he is to like <laughs> reporters and stuff. It's, it's literally nauseating to listen to him just rattle off a million different excuses every press conference and just his pompous attitude. And like, it turns me off. Like I, I, it's really, yeah, I as a diehard fan, he's just really, I don't like that guy. He's so blowing smoke up my butt, bro. Yeah. So he's got to definitely change the way he operates like in, in, in front of the fans, in front of the press. And then in terms of on the field, um, 
he needs to bring in like two or three rain rainmaker recruiters this off season. The current staff does not have the goods in terms of recruiting. We're seeing that right now. Um, even before the rumors started, recruiting was bad. So miss me with that message boards are the reason that we have no uh, <laughs> good recruits. That's definitely not yeah. the reason. So, I mean, maybe Mark Kagan, uh, get him out, uh, bring in Rashad samples maybe for Andre Coleman. Cause Coleman hasn't done much for us as the receivers coach and Rashad good. samples is just like a Dallas like pipeline mm-hmm. God for recruiting. So you think uh, we could get him back? If you pay him enough, yeah. I mean, he, yeah. no, I, if we give him a, like a receivers coach, he'd come back, I would imagine. He, he's more focused on career advancement than money right now because we did offer to pay him more than SMU paid him, but he's kind of mm-hmm. wanted to just climb that, that resume ladder so he can you know, get in the coaching ranks higher and higher. So mm-hmm. if we offer him like a receivers coach, I think he would accept. They're saying, yeah. oh, you might go make a push for him now that Shane Beamer went to – South Carolina, that'd be horrible. OU's already about recruiting us now, and if they get Rashad samples on staff, yeah, that'd yeah. be bad. So, um, and then also, as in addition to bringing in rainmakers, you got to get rid of Yancey McKnight. Um, I know he's Tom Herman's soulmate, but <laughs> our athletes don't progress under him. They seem to get worse and slower, and injuries are a problem. None of our fast guys look fast. They don't look fluid. Yeah. He's notorious for getting athletes and turn them into power lifters bodybuilders and it hurts you don't like you see it like you compare our speed to baylor speed tcu speed on on the outside and it's we're either slower or not any faster and we definitely have a lot more talent than them based on high school recruiting so um it, we got to definitely divorce yancey and bring in the best strength and conditioning coach we can find um so i think if we do those three things and then Del Conte's on his butt about consistency. We have to, you know, killer, killer attitude, blow teams out, you know, keep your foot in the gas. I think maybe that's a scenario where we can take a step forward next year with Herman and salvage recruiting. But um, I, that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at if we keep them. But I, I, I don't, I don't trust us to do any of these things. Um, we kind of. <laughs> I was going to say that wish list seems a little, right. like, seems like very best case scenario. Yeah, um, those are all things I want to, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seems like a lot to a lot to ask for for <laughs> for a coach that just last season completely restocked his entire. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> it's like, nah, that wasn't good enough. Do it again. <laughs> I'm gonna restock again. <laughs> in fact, get in fact get rid of the guys that you did keep around by chance. <laughs> <laughs> get rid of your your strength coach that you're conjoined to the hip to and, and just start over um yeah i mean yeah. no i i agree i it, that that just i don't know that's a, that's a lot but if he did make those changes yeah uh, i i think there there definitely could be a chance that we could even really improve i i think long term if we kept Herman around for a while, which I don't know. A lot has to happen for that to happen, but maybe he goes and, you know, metamorphosizes into Dabo Sweeney 2.0, but I, it's not, it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. I mean, before the season, all Longhorn fans were saying big 12 or bust, big 12 title or bust. We didn't even make the Big 12 title. We didn't have that many yeah. And um, it's just Herman's fault because they'll say new staff, new – I mean, that's all – it all starts with Herman and ends with Herman. So, yeah. I mean, maybe we'll – maybe we'll, maybe they'll surprise us in Hudson Card or Casey Thompson's the truth and we just light it up next year and, and uh, win 10 games, 11 games. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to dive into our K-State recap part of this video. Uh, Texas went up to Manhattan last weekend and uh, gave the Wildcats a a nice little winter beating, um, 38-point victory. Uh, We got to see Casey Thompson uh, at the end of the game, which we certainly wanted. Um, First off, you know, prayers and thoughts out to Derek Kerstetter, who suffered a really bad injury, but fortunately it sounds like it – it's not quite as bad as what everyone thought it was initially. I, I didn't see it on TV. Like, I mean, I was watching the game, but like the, the uh, announcers uh, 
didn't didn't cut to it at all and and i missed it when it actually happened so i i'm not sure how horrible it looked i guess i could go back and look at the footage if i was really curious but that that's kind of weird um but yes uh prayers out to him um but outside of that uh really good game on texas's uh part uh did a fantastic job running the ball um and overall, just a really big team victory. Um, Madrid, how about you first? Uh, kind of talk about some of what you liked about this game and uh, what stood out to you. Well, I guess if there was a uh, silver lining to Keontae transferring, it was this opportunity we got to see Bijan and, and Roshan, too, for that matter. I like the little tandem they had going on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that was just really refreshing to see. And honestly, why weren't we doing that a little bit earlier? In this <laughs> like we we know Bijan's like amazing. We know like, we 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 all know he's possible. This is possible. So it kind of irked me to be like, okay, come on, man. Like this 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 guy could have been useful. Um, like Matt said in the beginning of this episode, I gotta take it with a grain of salt. K State is is garbage and is probably gonna be garbage for a while too. I mean, Deuce Vaughn's pretty cool to watch. So I mean that that's that's. Um, that'll be interesting, but man, they've got a, a rebuild process, man. I, I, I mean, at least for Texas, right? Like at least we can get players. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was a good team win. Um, it definitely boosted morale, uh, probably. Um, but, um, it's, it was just, if, if this turns out to be the last game, it was a nice way to cap it off. So, but I did like the performance of Solomon everyone. So, um, yeah. Myers stops. Yeah, the offense in general just played super well, and it was led by Bijan and Roshan, and definitely the offensive line. I mean, Jake Majors, Andre Karich kind of stepped up and stepped in as his freshman, especially Jake Majors. He was looking awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, it kind of puzzles me how he wasn't playing all season with that uh, Kurt Fetter out at tackle. It just seems so, to work so much better. Um, There's a lot of young guys like that, right? It's just like, can you just play these guys a little earlier? Yeah, exactly. I mean, and Karras looked great, too. He came in later in the game once Kersetter went down. But he, he looked awesome, and I'm excited about Karras. He always – I mean, the, the few reps he's seen, he's looked really impressive. And I love what he did at South Lake Carroll. He was a late bloomer. So I'm excited about the future of the O-line, um, especially with Angulao. And hopefully Kersetter comes back now, um, gets healthy. Because I would imagine he wouldn't go to the draft right now. I'd imagine he'd come back for another year if he can. Yeah. So our O line could be looking really salty next year, which is, and then c- combine that with Bijan, it's going to really help our new quarterback next year, uh, you know, get acclimated if he has like all that around him. And um, Jordan Whittington, he got into the end zone for the first time in his career, which is awesome. Good for him. Uh, yeah, he, on that reverse, he took it to the house. And uh, yeah, dude, that guy's been through a lot. His first year and a half, two years at Texas, just so much like injury adversity so uh, just to see him you know get in the end zone is super exciting I don't think he got hurt against Kansas State which is a great sign so I think that's two games in a row now he's played without getting hurt so maybe he's starting to you know knock on wood get get uh get past his injury bad luck um but yeah offense looked great uh Sam was on point uh, 20 of 27 only one touchdown so he's not going to uh looks like he's not going to catch Colt's record which I'm fine with because Colt actually won here. Sam didn't. As much <laughs> yeah. as we love Sam, uh, he can settle for number two. But, uh, yeah, love Sam that. was great. And uh, defensively, I, I, I liked what I saw out of the young guys. Um, Jaron Thompson, Keaton Crawford looked amazing in his limited action. And uh, David Benda had an interception, although he did, he did have a few, a few bad plays as well. But we're seeing our young guys finally – get their feet wet. And it, that's what's nice about getting blowout wins. You get these guys in um, like, like Casey Thompson got to play and uh, we haven't seen much of that under Herman. So uh, it was just exciting to see a lot of these new faces in there uh, flying around and uh, just playing well, playing together, playing, playing fast physical football. So uh, overall the game was great, but in the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, it's just frustrating as always. So, Yeah. Because it didn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we waited until this game to actually – like, I I don't know if I texted you all this. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But it's been, a, it's been a, on my, my thoughts. As I'm like, you know how we executed this entire K-State game and how we ran the ball 
and got Bijan the ball on screens and in space. I'm like, yo, if we did this in the Iowa State game, like in the fourth <laughs> quarter when we had the lead, and especially those last two final drives when we're just trying to kill clock. You look like we knew how to kill clock. <laughs> It's just like, oh, my God, like, we could have easily won the Iowa State game if we just called these plays. And, yeah, I mean, everyone played, you know, really well this week, and credit to them for that. But, like, I don't get it. I don't get this Life coaching under staff. It's just – it's. I, I, guys want you, I guys want you to realize that we've been preaching this for, like, what season are we on? Like, two, three? I lost Four. count. Four, four years four, with him. No, like the show. Like, oh, yeah, this, this, is, this is our second season. I think I said, like, like, <laughs> 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 we've been saying this for so long. Uh, I just feel like we're, we're we're talking in circles, but we just know, we just know that this is this is life under Tom Herman. Like, this is yeah. you're gonna look good in, in the games where it's like, fuck, if we did this a game ago, we wouldn't we wouldn't see it. <laughs> so, right. Right. Yes. Yeah, he's not fooling us this time. I mean, we may go out and go beat some good team in a bowl game, and I'll expect us fully to, to you know, fall right back down. Fall right back, face flat next season when we start playing some random Big Twelve teams. So TCU is going to win again. Yeah, at TCU, at Arkansas, OU, games like that. It'll we'll see more of vintage Tom Herman. So these are the type of games he does win. So it's time to you know celebrate right now because this is this is when we <laughs> look great. season baby yeah <laughs> right yeah uh, i want to touch on Bijan a little bit more i was just watching his highlights again earlier today and he, he has that remember watching saquon barkley yes. state mm-hmm. he has that, i mean they kind of play similar in general but but they he ha- they both have that like wow magical factor like like, whenever he touches the ball in the open field, you just get so excited. Like, this guy mm. might juke five people right now. <laughs> and then run through somebody. and then yeah, Exactly. Yeah. He, like, he has the finesse, but he also has the build. I know what you're talking about. Like, you're just like, wow, this guy could do anything right now. Ball. Yeah. And um, he, he's got the potential to be, like, a once-in-a-generation gen- type talent. But uh, he's got to stay consistent with it. O-line needs to help him out. He needs to stay healthy, but – it's ridiculous how talented and balanced and gifted he is. Uh, I just can't wait to watch more of Bijan. Bijan's given, given me like hope again. So happy to see that. And uh, also Deshaun Jameson housed, basically housed another kick, another super close one to a, a kick six for a touchdown. But yeah, he's just so, he's, he's extremely, I wonder what his 40 time is. Cause say, whenever right? he starts accelerating, it's like, it's like a blur. It's like, we haven't had someone right. that fast since maybe, DJ Monroe, DJ Johnson, uh, and he may be faster than both of them. He looks uh, super explosive. So, yeah, Jameson's awesome. Uh, glad he's going to back, be back next year. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah me too. And then uh, Chris Brown also had a really good game. A lot of tackles on his behalf. Some really good defense. So, um, I think at the beginning of the season, we weren't too sure – what his future would entail. I mean, we didn't really, really even talk about him all that much, but um, I think he's definitely going to get drafted at this point. Um, definitely not a first, maybe not even a second rounder, but he'll be drafted. So, so good for him. He's, he's put out some good film this, uh, this past half of the season, even though we don't like his, his, uh, his flexing yeah. all that much. But I, I think he, I didn't see too much of it in the in the K State game, so maybe he's maybe he's holding back a little bit, and realizing that that's not that's not that cool. Must you do something really epic? Yeah, no, I agree. But he's a, he's I can't deny that he's talented. So yeah, he's physical. That's for sure. Um, did y'all miss Caden Stearns? No, no, not at all. To be honest with you, didn't for like half the game. I was like, oh, Caden Stearns is not there. Like, yeah, it took me a while to be like, "Oh, Caden's not there." But they never would mention yeah, Caden's really name. Yeah. I I feel like this year we never really heard Caden Stern's name except at the end of the Texas Tech game when he caught that interception. I think that was like his. Well, that that was his only interception of the year, and uh, yeah, 
like Caden, Caden's the kind of player that whenever he does make a tackle, the announcers are like, that's Caden Stearns. He's a highly rated guy going to be in the yeah. NFL. Like this, and it's just, just like you mentioned thing. him, you mentioned him one time he makes one play and you're acting like he's like freaking Earl Thomas out here. When in reality, he's just another dude with all this clout. And he's, he has the, the whole wolf of DKR. I'm like, you don't deserve – like, no offense to you. Like, I'm sure you're a great guy, and, and I really yeah, – I'm sure he's a great all guy. the best in the NFL, but you don't deserve a nickname like the wolf of DKR uh, when, you're, when you're just a dude. <laughs> I, you don't get – you know. You remember all those times that Caden saved us and it's like, or broke up a, or saved a touchdown or whatever? It's like, no, nah, I, I don't remember <laughs> any of those things. Right. Like, you don't have any epic moments of Caden. Yeah. Um, Honestly, no, no. I, I shouldn't say it because I'm going <laughs> to get, get so roasted in the comments, but I'll say it anyway. I was going to say, I don't fully, I don't firmly believe this anymore, but I'm like, if Caden Stearns has like a nickname and has all this clout, like honestly, would you, okay. Would y'all say that Dylan Haynes <laughs> was a better player at Texas I mean, than Caden Stearns? You agree? Yeah. Okay. It's- yeah. I mean, <laughs> think about it, man. Like more of an impact. Like, yeah. come on. It wasn't as pretty, but he was more effective. I was going to say, he was there. He was there. <laughs> yeah. I remember him picking off Baker Mayfield and stuff. So, yeah. Kids, kids, I mean, Dylan Haynes is good, man. He just he was just uh, – <laughs> every now and then he would just get, like, exposed. But <laughs> he was good. <laughs> okay. So, maybe I won't get crucified in the comments. No, I believe it. Maybe we can all argument. come to that agreement, even though it sounds absurd, especially yeah. after Caden's freshman year. <laughs> Other points for this game, um, yeah, Deuce was really awesome. Uh, I think I texted y'all. I said I really want – I you can't transfer, I don't think, to a school within your conference, but, man, if we could get Deuce to back up BJ, uh, Bijan, I, that'd be, like, the ultimate one-two punch. I'm like, that would be so epic. It's not going to happen, but he may transfer to a, to a different school. I would, unless he likes being the big fish in the little pond. I don't, I don't know. For sure. For sure. I don't know what to expect. Okay. Um, any other final points with Kansas State? I mean, like we said, it. No. Nah. It, it was a game. It was a game. It was fun. It was fun. It was a fun, was a fun Saturday. Game. It was an entertaining game. Yeah, I have. We haven't That's seen good. one of those in a minute. It was nice to yeah. just beat a team down. It's like, wow, and score points and have an offense that can move the ball. It was it was a good way to, to cap off the season if, if we don't play Kansas like we may not at this point. But, yeah. Yep. So, just like we just said, for that reason, we're not going to talk about Kansas on this show. Plus, uh, Myers and Madrid are ready. Yeah, if you want to break down that game, just go, like, to <laughs> – Three weeks back, like the same talking points are are, are there, like right. And if anything, if, if if beating this Kansas team by or whatever it was, or scoring sixty nine points on them, I, I'd I'd, I'd I'd say it's about the same thing that's going to happen if the game happens. Right, right. Well, I guess that wraps up this show. Then, unless you got anything else, Myers. Yeah, rest in peace, Fred Akers. That was the coach that my dad was at UT. Yes. Great great man. Gone gone too soon. You're right. You're right. All right, Pete. Well, um, for Myers, myself, and Madrid, that does it for today's uh, show. Thank you for watching. Um, I guess this is the last, uh, unless there's bowl games, um, this may be our last uh, game recap and preview that we have of the season. Uh, So you can kiss 2020 goodbye. Uh, We'll continue to be making videos. I mean, obviously with, with all this coaching drama and uh, this drama around COVID, I mean, we might talk a little bit about, you know, college football playoff type stuff. And uh, we're, we're not going to stop making, making content at this point. Uh, Y'all know us. So continue to see us around, but um, here's to the, (laughs) The, the easily forgettable 2020 season in Texas football. 
Um, let's hope that that next one somehow, some way, is a little bit better than this one was. So for all of us here at Texas Platinum, see you around and uh, have a good weekend ahead. And if we play Kansas, let's get a nice W. Yes, sir. Next year, Natty, baby. Next year. <laughs>